I'd like to introduce Ghazal Agagoli, um, Mulgrave graduate, class of 2015. Thank you, Ghazal, for sitting down with us to discuss your university experience. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I, like Bibi, you said, um, I am an, I'm actually a rising junior or rising third year at Brown, and I'm studying neuroscience, so that's my major, and I just declared, so very excited. Um, and I am pre-med, so I'll be applying for med school after I finish graduating um, and getting my bachelor's. Um, I'm very, I absolutely love my program. I love neuroscience and the pre-med classes that I've been taking. It's something where I just show up to class and I sit there and the professor starts talking and I'm just amazed. I'm just like, oh my God, this is amazing. It just puts a smile on my face. I get so excited. I go read papers. They're difficult. I don't understand them, but I read them. And then I understand some parts and I'm like, these stuff, are so cool. So I guess by taking different classes and, and really figuring out that this is something I'm really interested in, it sort of sparks this intellectual curiosity. So I realized that's something I'm meant to do, neuroscience and med school. Uh, how do you spend your summers between the academic years? Yeah, so last summer I uh, did EMT classes. I took the EMT course and I got my EMT, so now I'm an emergency medical technician. I can work in the ambulance, so next semester I'll be working in Brown EMS. And I also did research, uh, so I worked with one of the hospitals. I did clinical research last semester, and I've been working in that lab for a year. And this semester, this summer, they offered me a paid position as a third year clinical research assistant, which I'm very, very excited about. Um, and even, so I'll be doing that. Even though that. you're in second year. Yeah, so I'm in second year. I had one year of clinical research experience, but they're giving me a third year clinical research experience because I've been just so excited and I've been doing a good job, I guess. Um, so I'll be doing that over the summer and hopefully I'll be doing my independent study next semester. You've accomplished some amazing things in your first years at Brown University. You. Can you elaborate on these a little? Yeah, so like I said, I'll be doing Brown EMS next semester, so I'll be working in the ambulance, and I'm very excited about that. I also did, so I did my independent research for a year after my summer position, and I was able to, I have two publications in review right now. Um, one of them, I wrote an article about the undocumented immigrant healthcare and their access to it in the United States and is currently under review in Journal of American Medical Association, JAMA. And I also have my high school research, which I did at Brown for my extended essay. That's also under review. So I have two publications in that regards and in regards to research that I've been doing. I also do community um, engagement, community service. I'm a member of Best Buddies, where I basically work with kids with autism, and we hang out in the Providence community. Um, oh, I'm, an, I'm also, I was given a paid position at Brown on-campus job where I'm a peer career advisor. I'm also the youngest peer career advisor um, because I, I was able to do it in my second year where I give advice on editing resumes, interviewing, and help seniors find jobs. It's, it's a very exciting job. I really love it, and I've been doing that for a year. Well, that's pretty impressive. Thank you. Uh, why was Brown the right fit for you? That's a really good question. I think there are a couple of different factors that play a role in figuring out that Brown was a fit for me. One of the things was I visited Brown twice, once before I applied and then once after I got in. And those two times really helped me realize that, you know, even though you read on the website, you read the mission accomplishment, you do your research about the school, but visiting it is a whole different story because then you really get to know what the school, you know, there's a sense of community at each school, each the people have their own personalities, and these are things that you can't read on their website or see on a video. This is really something you figure out when you visit a school. And I visited the school, and I realized, wow, you know, Brown's strength matches my interest. You know, Brown has a really good neuroscience program, and I absolutely love neuroscience. So I was like, this is something I really want to do. The pre-med program, there's so much pre-med advising and so much help and support. 
And I always love to say this, if Brown was a person, it would be me. Like, the personality matches who I am. I'm, I am, my personality exactly matches the universities. And that's something I discovered when I visited the school and throughout my years at Brown, the sense of community and help and support is just something I absolutely love and is a part of who I am. So it was a perfect fit. It was the perfect fit, the lock and key model. <laughs> How did you come up with the idea of attending an Ivy League institution like Brown? Yeah, you know, I came up with the idea of attending an Ivy League when I was in grade three. And I was this little kid studying in Iran, um, and I, I, I asked my parents, I was like, I want to go to an Ivy League institution. And you know, at the time, they were like, OK, this, she's a kid. She just loves it. Let her have her moment. <laughs> it's OK. And then we moved to Canada, and I got that much closer to my dream of attending an Ivy League institution. And I remember when I was interviewing to come to Mulgrave, I had my interview with Ms. Richmond, and she, she asked me, she was like, so Gazelle, why do you want to come to Mulgrave? And I said, you know what, Ms. Richmond, I've always wanted to go to an Ivy League institution, and it's kind of, now I've reached this river, and I need to cross this river. Um, and to cross it, I don't know how to cross this river. And so depending on what school I go to, they provide me with different resources. And I really think, you know, Mulgrave just provides you with all these resources, all these different, you know, opportunities, experiences, all these different things. And I, I said, you know, that, that helps me. You know, I, I always like to think of it as like building a bridge over this river to get to my dream. And so Mulgrave really provided the resources, provided the concrete and all these different resources for me to build that bridge. But at the end of the day, I had to work very hard and I had to build that bridge myself. But without the resources, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So Mulgrave really helped me get there, even though, so I had the idea of going to an Ivy League institution when I was a kid, but Mulgrave really helped me make it a reality and it's amazing. Okay. Yeah. How did you end up with the program that you're in today? Yeah, so I was very interested in the sciences when I came to Mulgrave, and I, I really discovered that when I participated in different science programs in Mulgrave. So for example, I was a member of the Brown Science Club, uh, the Mulgrave Science Club, I'm sorry. So I was a member of Mulgrave Science Club. Um, you, and designed, you designed their website as well. I did, I did. I designed a website for the Mulgrave Science Club. And I was actually the leader of that club as well. And I, you know, I worked with a lot of amazing teachers at, Mul at Mulgrave where they helped me really get there. Um, I participated in, I think, three science fairs, um, grade 10, 11, and 12. And, you know, Mester Moore really helped me get there. Mester Moore always was there, you know, supporting me, inspiring me to go to these science fairs and present. And every year I did better. And um, I presented my extended essay in my grade 12 year, and I, I was a bronze medalist at the science fair. So I, it just improved over time. And I was, I was inspired by everything we did in science club, in our, in our science classes. I remember. The moment I realized I wanted to, neuroscience was something I w was considering pursuing when we were doing the pig dissections at, in gra our grade 12. And I remember we didn't have time and I really wanted to see the brain. So I was like, no, Mr. O, please just let me dissect the brain. <laughs> and Mr. O was like, okay, fine, Gazelle, you go dissect the brain and then we're, all, we're gonna dissect something else and then we can all see what they all look like. I remember I struggled. The sculpt was so difficult. I struggled to get the brain out. It was so difficult. But I was so proud. At the end of it, I had to cut the optic nerve. I had to like get the whole brain out of the skull. And at the end of it, I was so proud. I held this tiny little, I think Mastero has a picture. I, had, I held this tiny little brain in my hand and it didn't have a single scratch on it. I was so proud. <laughs> and I realized, you know, this is amazing. And I, when I was holding that brain, I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever done. I'm holding a pig's life, a pig's memories, everything a pig has seen in my hands. And it was such an, it was a very inspiring moment for me. And in the picture, if you ever saw the picture, I think I'm like glowing inside. <laughs> so how did Mulgrave prepare you for your first year at university? Mulgrave helped me a lot. Mulgrave provided 
a great environment. I I remember I was a little shy when I came, and <laughs> surprisingly, I was a little shy when I first came to Mulgrave, and I was... I became comfortable over time in participating in class discussions and, you know, fostering thoughts and opinions. You know, in TOK, I would give my opinions and we would have a great discussion. In our biology class, in geography, in English, in all classes, we had our own discussions. And I became so comfortable in participating in class discussions that at Brown, I don't feel any, you know, I'm not nervous. I just give my opinions and we participate in these class discussions. And we do have small class discussions at Brown, which is really great. And I'm able to use that opportunity because Brown made, uh, because Mulgrave made me very comfortable um, in doing so. And also, you know, going and talking. Uh, Mulgrave is very, everyone at Mulgrave is very friendly. You can go talk to anyone. I remember the teachers were so friendly, very open, always available for help. The university counselors were always available for help. Everyone was there. I even the head of school, Mr. John Ray, was very open, very available to talk to anyone. And I just became really comfortable with talking to faculty and teachers. And it just was very easy because when I went to class, I would go to office hours and talk to professors. And it's helped me build meaningful relationships with people at Brown. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I wasn't comfortable and I wasn't, Mulgrave didn't foster that for me. Uh, what specifically helped you to persevere and succeed through the university application process and to thrive over the years? Yeah, I think I, I have a motto of never giving up, um, and it it's helped me. You know, sometimes you fail and you fail and you fail and you fail, and you're like, okay, this this is it. I keep failing. But for me, I, I failed and I failed and I failed and I failed. And then I was like, no, this this isn't it. I can do it. And I kept doing it and I kept doing it. I remember I did the SAT math subject test right after I submitted my applications. I was like, why don't I just go and do another SAT math subject test? It's, it's it, it's gonna, I don't know, maybe it'll improve. And I got a much better score and I was able to submit those to my university. And um, even at Mulgrave, when I had, in grade 12 especially, when you had all the IAs and the, the extended essays and the university applications and SADs and ACDs, it's just a lot of work. And it might seem at the time that, oh my God, like this is a lot of work. but. I was very inspired. And at Mulgrave, there was such a strong team. There is a strong system of team. Um, there were things like the ACT program, the ACT prep. There were the teachers, the professors, ev the faculty. Everyone has provided so much support that even when I was going to give up, you know, I would go talk to the teachers. Um, even I remember during one of my ACT preps, I was like, oh my god, the ACT is so hard. Like I. Can't yeah, this is just too much. And then I remember um, they would be, the teachers at Mulgrave um, would be like, "No, you can do this. Like you got this. You're so close. You're this close." Um, and you know the strong support system, the strong. It. I always like to say it takes a village to raise a child. It really takes a village to go to university. You know, you have your teachers supporting you, your your prof your fa the faculty supporting you. you have, the Mulgrave provides ACT SAT prep. That was amazing. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do it without that. Uh, Mulgrave introduced me to independent counseling. The university counselors at Bre at Mulgrave, um, everyone. There was just so much support. I would not have been able to do it without the structural support that keeps pushing me. They, they, they just kept pushing me. They said, you got this. And I, I, I got there. <laughs> I got there eventually. <laughs> but it just t really took a team, my parents, everyone, everyone. It took everyone to really get there and go through the process. Uh, do you have any advice for Mulgrave senior students before they head off to university? Yeah. Um, I have. I have three advice, and I'm going to tell it through a story of my own. I remember the end of freshman year, when you apply for research positions, you want to apply three to four months before, and then you go through the process, and if you and you get your research position. And I applied to all these amazing research positions, and I submitted my resume, I went through the whole process, and by May 29th, I was rejected from every single one. I had no research opportunity. I was stuck. And I it was such 
a sad moment for me because I've never had such a moment where I'm, I've just achieved so much and I did so much research and it was just such a devastating moment for me to be rejected from every single research position I applied to. And for me, you know, that's one of the moments when I was like, wow, this is, this is terrible. Like, I just got rejected from all of these positions. But I didn't give up. So I was, I told to myself, okay, I'm going to be in Providence this summer. I'm going to apply for the EMT course, and I'm going to take the EMT course, get my EMT. That's done. But I'm also going to do research. So, and I told myself, I said, I will do research. Um, and so I emailed. I, I personally read and emailed 48 professors' research papers and CVs and, and made a very personal email to them about how interested I am in their research. 48 professors. <laughs> That's a lot of work. And you know, the research position, I wanted to start June 15th. So it was literally 20 days before I wanted to start. And everyone says, That's impossible. You can't do that. Professors don't have time. And out of these 48, a lot of them didn't respond. A lot of them said, wow, but I don't have a spot. Maybe come back in September. So I was like, OK, OK. I'm getting research positions for my next semester. And a couple of them responded and said, why don't you come talk with me? That's a great news. That's always good news. When someone says, come and talk with me, you're so excited. Um, so I went and I. You know, I talked to this professor, and he went on my LinkedIn, and he he looked at my social profile. He did he researched me before talking to me, and he was very impressed. And he said, "You know, you're the youngest student I've ever taken, but you, I'll take you. I'll come work in my lab, even though all my students are PhDs." And he is the director of the Center for Children at Risk. It's a he's a very he does amazing research. And he said, "You know, come come to my lab and work." And I started, and this lab does amazing stuff. So they look at neurodevelopment and epigenetics and how epigenetics influences neural development of infants. And they do multiple different research. And so I was able to work there over the summer. And I, they gave me the opportunity to do my own independent study based on what I found interesting. And I'm actually finalizing my data analysis, maybe I'll be able to submit that for publication. And I was also offered this position over the summer where I will be able to do acoustic um, cry analysis of infants to figure out if that relates to the syndrome called neonatal abstinence syndrome. And it's clinical research. I get to go to the hospital, record infants. I'm very excited. And I would not have been able to get that if I hadn't emailed those 48 professors and got re gotten rejected from all those schools. And had I given up then, I would not have been here where I am here today. I would not have all these amazing accomplishments. Um, I wouldn't have any of it. So I guess failing is, is definitely something that will happen. So my three advice based on this story is that Failure is going to happen, because even though at Mulgrave all the students are amazing students, work very hard, some may have never had any failures in their lives. That's going to happen when you go to university, because you're going to be in a community of people, everyone very intelligent, everyone works very hard. So you will have failures. And that's nothing to be afraid of. That's just something that you learn from, and you work harder, and you work harder. Opportunities don't land. That you, some, you might land on an opportunity, but most likely good opportunities, you have to go after them and fight for them. Um, my second one is don't be afraid to ask for help. Ask anyone for help. I went to the pre-med advising, um, and I said, how can I do research? I know it's May 20th. I know I don't have time, but research opportunities. And I found all these amazing places in Providence community that they do research. Ask for help, ask anyone for help and advice, and it pays off. And I guess my third one is, you know, work hard, perseverance, perseverance, perseverance. Eventually, you'll get there. I promise. <laughs> At least it worked for me. <laughs> so those are my three main advice. Well, Gazal, we're all very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to sit down with us for this interview, and good luck to you in the years ahead. Thank you so much, and congratulations to the class of 2017. <laughs>